Um, what is your most memorable induction into the Hall of Fame and why? Boy, uh, you know, one that really comes to mind is uh, when Pat Bolin was inducted several years ago that he came to tears to show the emotion and how much it meant to him. And, it, you know, I was lucky enough that I got to, when I worked for the, for the Broncos, I got to spend some time with, with Pat and Annabelle. And uh, he truly, as, a, as an owner, there was nothing short of doing everything the best and trying to win. And so to get inducted, it was like he was being acknowledged for, for what he did. And that was very special. Uh, one other one that kind of comes to mind too is that one of the awards, we not only at our banquet, we not only do we induct anywhere from four to six people, but we also give out awards to the athletes of the year, to the prior year. So the male and female high school and college and the pros. And one of the awards that probably I'm most proud of is I started the Disabled Athlete Recognition Award. And every year we give an award to someone from Special Olympics or the National Sports Center for the Disabled. And that year, this young lady from Special Olympics gets up and she had Down syndrome, but in her 20s, and she proceeds to talk about how she was told as a child that she couldn't, she was gonna be institutionalized. She would never be able to work. She could never do anything. And she proceeds to start talking about how many gold medals she's won, silver medals, bronze medals, and how she's working in a Special Olympics office. Not a dry eye in the house. People just, and then right after her, Joe Sackick was being inducted. And Joe gets up, and the first thing he says is, and I forget if he says, he looks over to her and he goes, I've done nothing in my career compared to what she did. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. Um, which sport do you believe has the most growth potential in Colorado? The one that's showing the most gross, gross. <laughs> Growth is uh, lacrosse. Uh, you know, not only in the country, but in, I believe Colorado is the fastest growing state for lacrosse. And a lot of that has to do uh, a few years ago when uh, DU hired uh, Coach Tierney from, uh, from uh, Princeton. And, uh, and then a lot of that was, was facilitated by Mac Freeman from the Denver Broncos who played lacrosse in college. And he convinced uh, Coach Tierney to come out to take the DU job. So. Uh, lacrosse, great growing sport, and it's a great alternative to football, sadly for football, but it's, you know, you give, you know, you give a boy or a girl a stick and a ball, and I mean, they're going to have fun. So. <laughs> um, what change would you like to see in sports? Less money. <laughs> it's... You know, it, it's, it's sad to see how, you, you know, the, the, the amount of money that professional athletes make, and I don't, and I can't begrudge them. I mean, everybody should be able to, if somebody's there is willing to pay you, you don't turn it down. But the problem is that it is filtered all the way down to high school and now into junior high and even into grade school. And what ends up happening is you get a lot of the helicopter parents who now think their kid is the next Peyton Manning. And you see the problems that it's, it's creating in high school sports. You see it in, you see it in the state now where there's, there's, I believe there's seven high school football jobs available because the coaches have quit. And I know in a lot of those cases where they've just kind of gotten fed up you know, with, with dealing with this. And you know, not, not, not everybody's gonna be successful, but it's, it's taken a lot of fun away. And also at the high school level, the kids can't, they can't go out and have fun. And they're, they're pushed to specialize in one sport to get that scholarship because not only the professional dollars, but then, you know, what it costs to go to college nowadays. You know, when I was at CU, you could go to CU for $5,000 a year or less. I mean, it's probably less than that. I mean, it's a major commitment to spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year to go to college when not everybody really should be going to college, but you can see where everybody gets so competitive for, in sports to try to get that scholarship that they start doing anything. You know, and, at the, and that's where a lot of the problems start because at the high school level, you get the things with uh, 
drugs that enhance, you know, your steroids, your HGH, all that, because high schools don't have enough money to test for it. And that's why you're, you know, you go out and you see some of these high school football games and you're seeing kids out there that are 6'5", 300 pounds. It wasn't like that 20 years ago. And it's sad. And so I, that's, that's the part. It's become, it's become so money driven that I'm afraid a lot of kids are, aren't playing sports just to have fun and, and enjoy, you know, each other and the, the, uh, the team, teamwork. I'm going to try to use this. That dance was fun that you and I were doing, but I thought maybe... Does this work or not? There we go. Um, let's open up to the crowd. What questions do we have? Yes. So let me just repeat it right quick because we've got to get it on the video. So her question is, uh, given all the members and inductees and everything that are involved in the organization, do you see women playing a more prominent role in the organization? Absolutely. No, we are, I, I think anybody who has a board, anybody with the company in here, one of the first things you're always trying to do is get more diversity on your board. Not only women, but minorities and we actually, we have a larger percentage of women on our, on our board than most boards do. I believe right now we have about seven, uh, eight women on our board. Now our selection committee is a separate committee. I don't vote, our board doesn't vote. We have a, the selection committee is made up of 30 people from print and electronic media. And they also are always trying, you know, to get as much diversity as they can on that board, but absolutely. You know, and I think the other thing is you, you would, you'd see is that just really in the, in the past 20 years since Title IX have there been a lot more female athletes. So females didn't play sports back in the 20s, 30s, and all that. And so it's catching up. But absolutely, we're always, always trying to do that. Yes. Yes, Betty. So the question is, she remembers the days when teams had loyalty, where the players would actually stay with the team, even though they were offered uh, other compelling packages. Do you think that'll ever come back? No. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> no, that's, you know, exactly. It's, you know, you can't blame the players, you know, and that all started with free agency. Because uh, up until that time, they probably weren't compensated enough. And they were, they were, servants of the teams and you know you can't blame a lot of these guys especially in football where the average the average career in, in the nfl is less than three years you know they're 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 one injury away from having to start over so you you got to get as much as you can when you can so yeah i i don't, I don't see that ever happening unfortunately okay next question yes So the first question is, are all the Colorado sports included in the vote? And then another one? Which other question? The other one is, has the barrel guy been inducted? <laughs> and the last one is, has the barrel guy been inducted? I'll answer the second one first. No, he hasn't. <laughs> uh, no, all sports are included. And that's one thing the selection committee, uh, Probably with some of my encouragement, they really need to start looking at some other things. Uh, you know, lacrosse is, is growing. I mean, there's, I think, John Grant, who has played here a long time, is probably a gentleman who, you know, was probably the greatest lacrosse player in this country who ended up playing a lot of his career here. You know, I think he'll be nominated at some point. To go in the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame, there's two criteria. If you were born in Colorado, you're an automatic. So if you were born here, like Kate, Kate could nominate me. I wouldn't get in, but <laughs> so, uh, or you lived in Colorado while you performed your particular sport, uh, whether you played for the team. So you take a, like a Byron Wizard White was born and raised here. 
you know, as a side note, talk about what sports can do for you. Goes on to become Supreme Court Justice of the United States. Uh, and then you get John Elway, who was born in Idaho, grew up in California, and then, but played in Colorado, so that's how he got in. Uh, but we need to look, our selection committee needs to look at, you know, all of the winter sports. You know, the extreme skiing and, and snowboards and all that, and to get caught up because it's... Yeah. There's a joke that uh, I, I, I got from Jim Sakamano. if you don't know, Jim Sakamano was a longtime PR guy for the Denver Broncos forever, and he's retired now. He's, uh, he's currently on our board. But he talked about, he told me one time, he said, you know, it's far easier to become a Catholic saint than it is to go into a sports hall of fame. <laughs> because there are, I don't know how many, I think there's like 10,000 Catholic saints. And we have 254 people in the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. So it, it's, it's extremely difficult. Let's take one or two more questions. Anyone? One once? Oh, right there. Hi, Thomas. Nice to see you again. Uh, I was really enjoying what you were mentioning in the beginning about this whole everybody gets a trophy and everybody gets this award. And I was thinking about the very children and saying that, you know, I was very, I'm a Gen Xer. My mother was a very unfavorable for my grandmother was a Depression era. You know, grandmother. So I definitely, that just mystifies me, right? That whole thing just mystifies me. Yes. So it's weird, is what I'm saying. It's just super weird to raise our kids to think that it, it's just everything is going to work in your favor. But it sounds like you have a tremendous influence on the human sports culture because you're giving back to it so much. Perhaps, or have you experimented with being that voice of your community into that? <laughs> So the question is, in this culture of living uh, that we're in, that uh, everybody gets a trophy, whether you win or lose, are you uh, at all able to be this voice of reason uh, to some of these parents and children? You know, if, if I'm ever asked by an organization my thoughts on that, I absolutely I give them my, my opinion on it. Uh, you know, and there's some like, I, well, one of the organizations, that the, the Denver Police Activities League, which is run by Jake Schroeder, and I mean, I'm sure you've all seen Jake sing National Anthem at all of the Avs games, you know, and he, he was the lead singer for Opie Gone Bad. And Jake's been a great friend. He comes to our banquet and sings the national anthem. But he runs that, and we've talked about it, and it's, he's gotten rid of that. Uh, you, know, I, you know, and I, I have a, my son's 28 years old, and was a, he, he's successful, works for Oracle now, but was a terrific athlete. But I enabled him. I mean, I pushed, it was like, you could do everything, I did it for him, and I, and I look back, I could have done things differently. You know, when I was brought up in, in old Aurora, you know, we wandered everywhere. And you competed against anybody and everybody from Denver. I remember being out at Del Mar Park playing basketball two all hours of the night, coming home and, you know, have blood all over me from either, you know, just playing ball, accidentally getting hit or, or maybe not accidentally and trying to explain that to my mom and dad and then taking me to get stitched up and stuff. But you, you, you learn that failure is okay. The key is just get out there and just keep fighting, keep trying it. You know, don't be afraid to make that decision or, or take that jump. And you're gonna fail, but you're gonna learn from that. And I, and I think we've taken some of that away from our kids, that we've, we do too much for them so they succeed, because we want them to have better than what we had. Uh, I think in a lot of cases too, a lot of parents kind of live vicariously through their their children who get successful in sports, and, and that's dangerous as well. Uh, it, it's your high school, a little of that was going on that I'm not gonna go into about a couple of, of a feud between a couple of families there, but, uh, you know, I, if, if, if I'm at, we, what we try to do, one of the things, I'm kind of getting off that, but one of our board members, Theo Gregory, who was with the El Pomar Foundation, and I've known Theo for years because he was an assistant athletic director at CU. But when we started building this money up, and when I said, look, we've got to do more than dishonor these athletes. We've got to reach out and help kids somehow. So it was discussed, so well, should we do scholarships? Should we put on camps? Should we do this stuff? And he brought up one, one great notion was that 
that in coming from El Pomar was he said, don't do what other nonprofits are already doing. Support those nonprofits so they can do a better job at what they're doing. And so we have done that. We, we look out and we see what fits our mission to help you sports. And so we fund them and, and, and we're, we're asked to give advice on how they can be better. Uh, and so with that, if you know, someone says, you know, we're going to do ribbons or, or trophies. And I've been to some of these events and I see that and then I'll kind of pull somebody aside and go, I said, you know, I, I can't support everybody, you know, getting a trophy now. It's a balancing act. You, you, want every, you want inclusion, you want everybody to have an opportunity, but in the end, are you really hurting these kids? Because when they get out in the real world, they get devastated when they, when they don't get that trophy or they don't get that job and they don't you know, get the raise or whatever and they don't get that Audi when they're 22 years old and, you know, and they wanna go from A to Z overnight. You know, and I see it. I, we, We'll get, Kate and I will bring in four interns every summer. And, you know, a lot of them, they'll come in and say, you know, God, I want Tom's job. And I'm going, you don't know how many years and how much blood and sweat and, and pneumonia and all these things to get to this point, you know. So it's, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Let's give Tom a round of applause.